What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, I'm going to give you reasons why I think you should buy an ISF. Okay, so the first reason why I think that you should buy an ISF is because of the low cost of entry uh, that's relative to everybody, but um, for what you get, as well as the money that you're going to spend while owning it. Um, and I, I say that because, you know, if you look online now, first, you're not going to find too many ISFs for sale. So let me tell you, if you find a good one, you need to act fast. But um, there are ones that are, you know, decent examples in the in the high teens. Um, there are obviously the ones that people have have found with, you know, issues with them, ten, twelve thousand dollars. But um, if you wanted a clean like 08, um, you're probably going to spend at least uh, high teens, low twenties to get into an ISF, all the way up to. Um, you know, into the 30s for the later model years, uh, low mileage, and then the 2014s with low mileage are, I've seen them as high as like in the 40s, which, you know, you would really have to find the right buyer to want to spend that money for that car. But if you just want to get into an ISF, you know, you can easily do one uh, in the high teens, low 20s range, which, you know, when the average car price today, new car, is um you know thirty five thousand or so uh, for for what you get I think that's you know not too bad of a, a deal in the the low you know low twenties but um, you know if you want the nicer things the lower mileages the uh, cleaner kept vehicles uh, you are going to be paying a little bit more into the um, high twenties um, low thirties what I see online um, also uh, the prices that you're going to pay to maintain this car it's you know I've had this car for nearly four years now. And aside from, you know, brakes, gas, you know, fluids, things that, you know, most any car is going to cost, you know, I really haven't had to spend too much money on this car outside of like, you know, extra usage, you know, track days and things that are, you know, my doing. But if it's just your daily car, you you know, it's not really expensive to maintain. Um, it's uh, pretty cheap to own and for the performance you get and the uh just overall package of the car um it's it's really good you know the cost of ownership is really low i'm going to link up top here a um our cost of ownership video that i did and uh you know there are some things that can happen with an isf that you know you could look out for or that may possibly affect you um i do have a video on that one it's problems with problems uh with the isf that i've uh, also made i'm going to link that one as well but um they're really not too bad there's nothing that's like catastrophic uh, that is going to happen to your car you may have like you know some leaks or some things that um you know are things that you want to uh fix but nothing is your engine is not going to blow your transmission is not going to blow um i've heard of maybe like one-off instances and then there are obviously the guys who have um boosted their cars or run nitrous uh you know things like that but if you're just going like stock to like full bolt on you're pretty pretty safe um owning this car uh, and and not having too many issues you know uh, many issues with it the next reason what that i want to cover is the performance um yes this car performs well as you've seen um you know i do i've done well on the track on uh, the at the drag strip um on road courses and whatnot but um, just, you know, a daily driver, it's good, it's good as well. It's fast enough for the street, for, for street use. Um, obviously in the 12 years that this car has come out, there have been leaps and bounds, uh, with other vehicles that have come on the road, especially, um, you know, the European and American cars. A lot of those are boosted now. Um, so they're making absurd amounts of horsepower, but, um, this car still performs well. And um, that is one of those things that uh, a lot of people don't get. They might not know what the car is. And I've had a lot of people come up to me wondering what it was, you know, how it's doing so well at the track. Um, there are 10 second ISFs out there. If you want to go down that road, uh, high, running high tens in the quarter mile at, you know, 130, 130, 135 miles an hour at the quarter mile, um, it is possible to um get you know really good performance numbers out of these cars you're going to spend a lot of money but um it is there if you want to do it 
Now, if you just, you know, go full bolt-ons, you can get these cars to the high 11s, um, which is, you know, re pretty respectable today. Um, so, you know, these cars are, are you know, quick. They're not um, crazy fast or anything, especially by today's standards, but um, they get the job done, and uh, a lot of people are still impressed with this car at the track, what it can do. Um, it is capable uh, with the right mods, the right driver, and... Um, you know, I think that this car, you know, can put a lot of its surprises on people's faces. And then I'm going to touch on reliability again. Like I mentioned previously, um, this car has been very re reliable. I have not, you know, gotten stuck anywhere. Nothing has blown up on me. There's been no catastrophic failures. So it's been a great car for um, the last four years. If you want a car that you can count on to get you there to uh, have some fun in at the track, I've driven, you know, Ooh, 200 miles to a track, ran, you know, four or five sessions, 20 minute sessions on a track day, beat the crap out of this car and then drove home. No issues. Um, a lot of Fs that have done that have driven much longer than that as well. So it is a very reliable car to have. And then another thing that I think is cool about this car is the uniqueness of it. Um, in the U.S., over a production run from 2008 to 2014, there's only, I believe, like 5,200 of these made. So count all the ones that have been, uh, you know, parted out or destroyed or, you know, in crashes and whatnot. And that number gets down uh, a little bit lower. And if you want the uh, higher end, you know, the higher years, you're going to uh, get even less of those. I think there's uh, 86 in 2014, 100 in maybe like 20 or so in 2013, and then like 500 and maybe 60 or so, I believe, as I saw the numbers, for 2012s, like my car. So you are a very unique car. Uh, obviously the 08s, 09s, there was a lot more of those, but even worldwide, I think there was 12,000 and some odd of these made. So uh, some people even said that this is more exclusive than some Ferraris, which uh, kind of crazy to me to, uh, to believe, but um, if you want to be unique, this is uh, one of the cars to do it because I have been to the drag strips and I've been to uh, track days. And if I haven't gone with other F cars, you're more than likely going to be the only F car there. Um, so a lot of people will wonder, you know, what's that four door Lexus doing, um, you know, doing pretty well on the track. Uh, so you'll have people coming up and talking to you. People can't not believing like, you know, what's in that car? I've never, I, I haven't even heard of uh, an F. So it's kind of cool to be, you know, part of that uh, club of very exclusive cars. And um, that's, you know, just another cool, cool reason to own an, own an F car. Next up, I want to say this car is kind of a jack of all trades, uh, master of none, especially if you buy one now. And I say that because, you know, you can get these cars, you know, decent ones in the uh, 20s to, you know, mid 30s ranges where I'm seeing most of them, uh, which isn't too bad for uh, a vehicle if you're going to buy it. And also it kind of, you know, does everything relatively well. It can seat four people. It can, uh, it can you know, get you from A to B with decent gas mileage if, uh, you know, that's what you're trying to do. Um, performs relatively well at the drag strip and um, it performs well on road courses and then there's potential to um you know modify it if you want but i think it's just a great overall vehicle um it's it's pretty incognito as well it doesn't have any crazy wings or anything and it's kind of hard to tell uh that it is a special car if you're kind of into that um you know a lot of people don't even realize there's a v8 in there until you open it up so it's um yeah it's really good at a lot of things just not you know, great at one thing. And I also wanted to add, now that the ISF is more mature, there are more companies that are supporting the ISFs and the F brands. Um, I know at the beginning, back in 2008, there weren't too many choices when you wanted to do something to this car. But now that the, you know, platform's, you know, 12 years old, um, you can do anything from, you know, keeping it stock to all the way to building a full race car. Um, with, a, you know, I think 700 horsepower or so is what, uh, the supercharger kit from RR Racing is at. Um, you know, you can go from just, uh, full bolt-ons. There's, I think, three main headers that you can buy for this car. Um, there's probably over a dozen cat-back exhaust systems. There's, um, 
you know, the intake pipes uh, and filters, you know, a couple to, to choose from there. Um, coilover systems from, I've seen some, I think around $600 for the cheapest ones, um, all the way up to like $6,000. So wide range, probably I'd say at least a dozen choices for coilovers. Um, uh, Mike's, uh, or Figs Engineering, he does a lot of uh, the suspension work for the ISFs, um, got a lot of adjustability there. And um, so I'm, I'm just glad that there are companies that are, you know, developing and making parts for the F brand. No, we don't have the same support like AMG or uh, the M, you know, BMW M cars, but at least we do have a couple choices now. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, cosmetic changes that you can make to the car, hoods, um, uh, let's see, the front lips, the, the side skirts, uh, the side lips, and then the rear uh, diffusers, different wings that you could put on the car. So I think you, even fenders. So there's a lot of different things that you can spend your money on with the ISF. Um, interior parts, you know, uh, nice, uh, I think Elvin, he's doing the um, carbon fiber wheels, doing a really nice job with those. A um, couple guys make different carbon fiber parts for the interior. So you can do a lot with these cars. You can you can spend a lot of money, and um, and you know the it's almost like the sky is the limit. But um, yeah, it, I'm just glad that there are those vendors that are making parts that are developing it and uh, giving us those options. So if you want to do that, you can do that with your F. You can keep it stock, but you you have the options there uh, more than the guys that you know bought the car back in 2008, 2009. So I'm really glad for those vendors. Um, so. That's going to just kind of wrap up this list here. Um, hopefully that hopefully that kind of gave you some reasons, um, you know, as to why you should get an ISF if you've been looking at it right now, if you've been looking to upgrade from maybe the F Sports or a 250 or 350, I would definitely recommend doing it. Um, you know, it's been a great, uh, great car for me the past four years or so. And uh, just go for it. And if you, but if you do find one and it's a clean one, I would recommend you act fast because from what I see on the Facebook groups and Club Lexus and whatnot, you know, people are, you know, quick to, to, to um, buy up the good ones. So if you find one, move fast. That's my recommendation and uh, go from there. So thanks for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one.